So let's go ahead and take a look at another example where we use Z-transform properties to help compute the Z-transform of a discrete time signal. In this problem, we're going, we're going to be working with the discrete time signal x of k, which will be equal to a to the k times cosine omega naught k times u of k. We're going to find x of z, and we're going to find the region of convergence for this discrete time signal. So first of all, let's think about what, what if I had a simpler signal? What if my signal was y of k, which was just a to the k u of k? So if that was the discrete time signal we were given. Finding the z-transform of this would be almost trivial because we could just go to our table, and we know that this has a z-transform of 1 over 1 minus a z-inverse. And the region of convergence for this right-sided signal would be all the points in the complex plane whose magnitude z is greater than a. However, that's not what we have exactly. We're dealing with x of k. So let's, let's rewrite x of k just a little bit using y of k. We can actually rewrite x of k like this. We can rewrite it as 1 half e to the j omega k times y of k plus 1 half e to the minus j omega k times y of k. If you factor out the 1 half and the y of k from each of these terms, what you're left with is e to the j omega k plus e to the minus j omega k divided by 2 is equal to cosine. So that's just using Euler's to write cosine in kind of a funny way. And then we've distributed out the multiplication. So this is a perfectly equiv equivalent way at writing the signal x of k. And writing it in this way is going to let us apply a z-transform property pretty easily. So the property that I'm going to use, the z-transform property that I'm going to use, is the following. Multiplication by an exponential sequence property says the following. And I can use it like this. Basically what I have right here is e to the j omega k y of k, right? If this is actually what I had, the exponential sequence property says that in the z domain, you should take the z transform of y, y of z, and replace all the z's that you see with z divided by e to the j omega naught. Well, that's essentially what I have right here. Let's not worry about the scale factor of a half. What I have right here is a number raised to the k times y of k. So I can just use the exponential sequence property on this piece, and I can use it on this piece to easily write down the z-transform of x of k in terms of y, y of z. So let's go ahead and work through that. Another way I can write this, instead of having z divided by e to the j omega naught, that's obviously equivalent to z times e to the minus j omega naught. Just move up the exponential to the numerator and change the sign on the exponent. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. Here's x of k that we're dealing with like before. And we know now, since we're going to use the exponential sequence property, that we can write x of z as 1 half times y evaluated at e to the minus j omega naught z plus 1 half times y evaluated at e to the j omega naught times z. And remember what y of z is equal to. It's equal to 1 over 1 minus a z inverse. Another way I can write y of z is z over z minus a. That's another equivalent way to write it. So let's go ahead and work through this a little bit. What I need to do is over here, I have z inverse, which is 1 over z. So that 1 over z, the z, I need to replace with this. So when I replace it with 1 over z, I have 1 over e to the minus j omega z, so which is z inverse. And then instead of having 1 over e to the minus j omega, I can just bring e to the j omega up top. I want to do the same thing here. I really have a z inverse right here, which is 1 over z. That z needs to be replaced with e to the j omega naught z. So when I have 1 over e to the j omega naught z, that's the same thing as e to the minus j omega naught times z inverse. And that's exactly what I get right here. So we've used the multiplication by an exponential sequence property right here. Since we already knew what y of z is, we can just go ahead and substitute in the appropriate value for z. I could just stop right here. There'd be nothing wrong with stopping right here, but let's go ahead and just simplify things just a little bit. They already have almost a common denominator. I really need to cross multiply all this stuff out. So that means I'm going to put a 1 minus a e to the minus j omega z inverse there. And I'm going to add 
1 plus, I'm sorry, 1 minus a e to the j omega z inverse there. And then the denominator is now the product of my previous denominators. So all I'm doing is getting a common denominator. And then you can see some interesting things happen. On the numerator, I have 1 plus 1 is 2. I also have e to the minus j omega, e to the positive j omega. So if I do some factoring, I can get a cosine. Similar things happen on the denominator. If I multiply everything out, I can get a cosine. So we won't go through those details explicitly here, but you can work them out. And the numerator turns into 1 minus a cosine omega naught z inverse. And the denominator turns into 1 minus 2a cosine omega naught z inverse plus a squared z to the minus 2. So kind of, a, kind of an ugly final answer. We could probably have to plot this in MATLAB to get a good feel for what this looks like exactly for some particular value of z or if we wanted to get the DTFT out of this. But this is our algebraic expression for x of z that we were looking for. What about the region of convergence? How is the region of convergence changed? I haven't really talked about that at all in this problem yet, but we know that when applying these properties, the properties you have to also keep track of what happens to the region of convergence. So let's revisit that just briefly. I know that the region of convergence, when I apply the multiplication by an exponential sequence property, is going to change the region of convergence by the magnitude of the number in the exponential sequence. Here the number was essentially e to the j omega, or e to the j omega naught. But, however, the magnitude is 1. So in terms of this region of convergence, it's not going to shrink or grow at all. It's not going to shrink or grow at all. Its magnitude is going to stay the same in terms of where it is located relative to the origin. If um, So in terms of what this region of convergence looks like, is it looks exactly the same. The region of convergence has not gotten any bigger, it's not gotten any smaller, it stayed exactly the same. So that wraps up that example. In this particular example of using Z-transform properties, it really focused on the exponential sequence property. And again, the strategy with all of these is, is very similar. Find something that you know, some Z-transform that you know, and then find a way to use a property to be able to derive the desired Z-transform from the existing Z-transform by applying some simple property.